Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala ali wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da Habitif Allah continue on in our study of La ilaha illallah the meaning of the shahada and we reach the fourth condition we talked about ilm we talked about qabool and uh, you know uh, knowledge and we talked about acceptance and we talked about ikhlas, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to the conditions for the shahada. So the fourth condition is al-inqiyad or submission and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that means, for example, when someone embraces Islam, that they should be inclined to have, they should have the intention to strive to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam ordered that this is in qiyad and as a muslim in order to actualize and make tahqiq of the shahada then this condition must be uh, in place and that is in qiyad that is submission and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of our ability and what also what we find is that the ulama especially the ulama, which are known as the a'imma, a'imma to da'wah, meaning the imams of da'wah, for example, here in the Arab Peninsula, specifically in Saudi Arabia. At the time of Muhammad ibn the Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, the imams that came after him in this, this pen, on the Arab Peninsula, on especially in what is known as Saudi Arabia, that those imams are known as the a'imma to da'wah. You know, the, the imams that are on the da'wah to salafiyah. And one of the, the definition that they refer to as Islam, for the meaning of Islam, when you see in their books, you'll see that they describe al-Islam, uh, Islam is istislam lillahi bi tawheed wal inqiyad luhu bi ta'ah that Islam is is Islam lillah It is submitting fully to Allah uh, in Islamic monotheism, with all those categories of uh, of tawhid that we mentioned by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's divine names and attributes, His lordship, and to, to direct all worship to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala alone. This is al uh, inqiyad lahu bi and it is also obedience to him, and that's the term that we come up to the fourth condition, which is inqiyad, submission. وَإِنْقِيَادْ لَهُ وَطَاعَ وَخُلُوسْ مِنْ شِرْكِ And leaving off shirk وَأَهْلِ And the people of shirk, meaning the mushrikeen. So, inqiyad, it requires this submission of the heart, that you are willing, you have... You are on the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you submit your heart. Your heart is inclined to do those things which are a part of taqwa, which is a part of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And taqwa is a fi'l awamri la wa tark manaha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That taqwa is a Fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing his commandments and leaving off those things he has prohibited. That's taqwa. So that has a direct relationship, of course, with inqiyad. Because inqiyad is submission and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So submission and obedience, the shaykh said, Hafid al-Hakami, rahmatullahi rahmatul wasiya. He said, submission and obedience to what la ilaha illallah requires and that it negates disobedience. So submission... And obedience negates disobedience. And this is what the shahada ref, uh, requires of us. Allah Azza wa Jal said, And turn in repentance and in obedience with true faith, meaning true tawheed, to your Lord and submit to Him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to make istislam lahu, to, to submit ourselves fully in obedience, surrendering our souls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we don't surrender our souls to people. We don't surrender our souls to other deities. We don't surrender our souls 
to creatures and created things or the jinn. However, there are people out there who believe in those things and worship those things and even, even submit themselves to the jinn. As we, as you see, there's so many movies out there now that talk about exorcism and stuff, or talk about uh, jinn and, and evil stuff and being with the devils. This is because they have inqiyad li shaitan. They have inqiyad. They submit their souls, their whole selves, to the shaitan and to their desires. They say, "Hey, I want to do this." I'm going to do that. I love money so much, I'll do anything. I'll sell my soul. I'll sell my children. I'll sell my body parts. Anything so I can get a status in this world. They worship the shaitan, in fact. But the mu'min follows the commandments of Allah. And Allah Ta'ala said, And whoever submits his face to Allah, while he is a muhsin, a good doer, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold. And that is la ilaha illallah, al-urwatu wufqa. This is the trustworthy handhold uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and that is la ilaha illallah, the testimony of faith. That's the trustworthy ha handhold. And that's the miftah, the key to Jannah. Which means holding on to la ilaha illallah. And to Allah return all matters for decisions. In Surah Al-Luqman, verse 22. The meaning of which is... That he submits, he who submits his face to Allah and obeys him, and he is a righteous person worshiping Allah alone, uh, meaning that the one who submits all of his affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this is the one who submits his face to Allah, meaning he obeys, obeys him, and he is a righteous person worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever does not submit his face to Allah and is not a righteous person, then he has not held on to the most trustworthy handhold that will never break. And that is la ilaha illallah, that's tawheed. That is the meaning of the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal, which follows, and whoever disbelieve, let not his disbelief grieve you. To us is their return, and we shall inform them what they have done. Verily, Allah is the all-knower of what is in the hearts of men. We let them enjoy for a little while, that in the end we shall oblige them uh, to enter a great torment. So this is the people who worship their desires. This is the people who try to turn you away from Tawheed and turn you away from Islam. Turn you away from Istislam lillah bi Tawheed wal inqiyad luhu wa khulus min shirku ahli. The people who try to turn you away from that from pure monotheism, worshiping the one who created you and created the heavens and earth, then they are callers to the abwaba jahannam. Those are the callers of the shaitan. And Allah, and they are the worshipers of the shaitan. And in fact, a true uh, story, which just happened to me, uh, just has continually happened to me, a person that I know, Morton Storm, I was in Yemen with this man, he still posts, uh, replies, trying to invite me away from Islam. But the fact that he follows my YouTube shows that he's the one interested in what Ahl Tawheed is doing. And in fact, we don't know, maybe Allah will guide him away from his, he left Islam. This man left Islam. He went from one path to the next path to the next path like a ping pong ball until it led to Zandaka. And this is the way meaning that he left Islam. He, he became a murtid. And this is the case, as the Salaf used to say, the classical scholars used to say, that the one who uh, has kathrita in qilab, or that he's always changing, you know, his heart is always, one minute he's Sufi, the next minute he's takfiri, the next minute he's saying he's Sunni, next minute he's this, next minute he's with Jama'at al -Tablik. next minute he's Diobundi, that this person, that they usually end up on disbelief. Because they don't, they're not firm on anything. And they're not firm, ho firmly holding to what? The rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاَتَّسِمُوا بِعَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold on, all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah, which is the Qur'an. And some say it's a sunnah. And some may say it's the Qur'an and the sunnah and the jama'ah. Hold steadfast to that. And, 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 and don't divide. 
That's what Islam calls us to. That's what Allah Azza wa Jal wants for us. The next condition, the fifth condition, a sidq and truthfulness in your shahada. So that when you make the shahada and when you utter this testimony of faith in your salat and when you just say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Whenever you say this testimony of faith, that you should be truthful. It shouldn't be a lie. It shouldn't be your inward. The munafiqeen, they, what's in their hearts, they hide what's in their hearts. And they say it on their tongues. You will see them. They will look righteous. And they will look like Ahli Iman. But in their hearts, it's empty. It's dead. And it's on kufr. They don't even believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. billah. Or their different stages of nifaq. So the Imam said, truthfulness to la ilaha illallah negates lying, falsehood, and it is to say la ilaha illallah truthfully from one's heart and to make one's speech in accordance to what is in one's heart. So that you want to have muafaka between your heart and your speech. Allah said, Alif Lam Mim, do people think that they will be left alone because they say we believe and will not be tested? We're going to be tested in your Iman. But truthfulness, sidq, is what's going to help you stay from Ahli Iman. And this is going back to the case I mentioned about Morton Storm, the sidq. The sidq wasn't there. Or maybe perhaps the sidq was there at one time, but it got eroded because he went to so much falsehood. He became with Al-Qaeda, with the most extreme uh, takfiri groups at that time. And because of this, because he was on a wrong path, then it was easy for him to go from wrong to even greater wrong and even greater wickedness, which is leaving Islam, leaving off what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded, which is to worship him and him alone. And we indeed tested those who were before them, and Allah will certainly make it known the truth of those who are true, and will certainly make it known the falsehood of those who are liars, although Allah knows all of this before testing them. And this is Surah al ankabut Verse 1 through 3. Allah Ta'ala said regarding the munafiqeen who said la ilaha illallah, speaking falsely. This is the hypocrites. They said la ilaha illallah. The hypocrites say la ilaha illallah. Wa Muhammad Rasulullah. They say this. They, be, they say that, but their, their belief, their sick, their truthfulness is not there. Uh, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, And of mankind there are some who say we believe in Allah in the last day, while in fact they believe not. They think to deceive Allah and those who believe while they only deceive themselves and perceive it not. That's Surah Al-Baqarah. They're not mu'mineen. They don't believe. That's what that ayat means. nas from the people. nas There are some people they say that we believe in Allah and we believe in the Day of Judgment. But they're not mu'mineen. They're not believers. They say this, but it's a... Now, so, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they think to deceive Allah and those who believe while they only deceive themselves and perceive not. In their hearts, and in their hearts is a disease. That disease is nifaq. It's hypocrisy. So in their hearts is disease, and Allah has increased their disease. A painful torment is theirs because they used to tell lies. And that's Surah Al-Baqarah, verses 8 through 11. How many times has Allah Ta'ala mentioned them and exposed them, repeatedly exposing their cover and revealing it? He makes their humiliation manifest in more than one place in his book, such as Surahs Baqarah, Ali Imran, Nisa, uh, uh, Anfal, Toba, as well as the, a, a whole surah dedicated to them, Al-Munafiqun, Al-Munafiqun, along with other surahs. So Allah mentions the hypocrites all throughout the Qur'an. In Al-Bukhari and Muslim, on the authority of Mu'ad ibn Jawa, Raddi Allah ta'anu from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is none who testifies that la ilaha illallah, and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger truthfully 
from his heart except that Allah prohibits him from entering the fire. So this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu is, is a shahid, the shahid of this hadith, meaning the, the main point of this hadith is that as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, there's none who testifies that la ilaha illallah and that Muhammad is a slave and messenger of Allah truthfully from his heart. So the shahid is, is that that is, is sidq, is truthfulness. And that's a part of the shahada. Because here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned the shahada and he made a shant. He made a condition. He said, there is none who testifies that la ilaha illallah and that Muhammad is his slave and messenger truthfully from his heart, except that Allah prohibits him from entering the fire. So if you, so a condition from being prohibited from the hellfire is having that shahada truthfully, accepting that in your heart. So Allah made being saved from the fire for the one who says this statement conditional by saying it, it truthfully from his heart. Merely pronouncing la ilaha illallah does not benefit the one who says it unless there is agreement with the heart. Also in Al-Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Anas ibn Malik and Talha ibn Ubaidillah radiallahu ta'ala anhuma in the story of the Bedouin who was a who was Damam ibn Tha'laba a delegate of Bani Sa'ad bin Bakr when he asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the rulings of Islam and was then informed by him so this Bedouin a desert nomad uh he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he, he asked about the rulings of Islam and was then informed by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he didn't ask the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do I have to do anything else? the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam answered no except if you perform it optionally the, then the Bedouin said I swear by Allah I will not increase upon that nor decrease from it so the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said he will be successful if he is truthful and in some narrations, indeed, if he is truthful, then he will enter into paradise. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi made it a condition for his success and entrance into paradise that he was truthful. That if the man just did the five pillars of Islam and he was truthful with that, truthful with actualizing Tawheed, he would enter Jannah. And so that shows us the importance of that condition uh, and those two conditions of the Shahada that we mentioned. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.